Falling oil prices, what are the consequences? Between 2011 and 2014, oil prices sat above $100 a barrel, prompting investment in exploration and technological advancement. This advancement opened up new deep wells, shale gas wells, and oil sand reserves, many of which were located in North America, making the United States one of the world's key producers of oil. New jobs were created and oil company revenues skyrocketed, but the increases weren't sustainable. And by mid-2014, oil, oil prices plummeted and have remained below $50 a barrel in recent months. The cause was basic supply and demand. Sluggish economies in Western Europe and China coupled with greater efficiencies in the use and consumption of oil, drove down demand globally. And production cuts, partic particularly by the OPEC members, which have historically been used to control prices, were abandoned as producers tried to force one another out of the market. Lance will now tell us how the falling oil prices are impacting the global economy. The drop in oil prices are affecting the economy by unemployment rates are skyrocketing. Countries that rely on oil as a main source of income are being affected economically, and small businesses are benefiting from the low prices. This year alone, many major oil companies have laid off 200,000 employees and closed plants throughout the country. These companies include Chevron, Halliburton, and Sonnegay. How is this affecting the country economically? Countries that rely on oil as their main source of income are suffering economically. For example, Saudi Arabia's government revenues come 90% from oil. Many other countries are following in the effects of lower prices, such as Russia, Iran, and Japan. Some benefits come from lower pricing to small businesses, such as since gasoline prices have dropped this year, many businesses are able to cut transportation costs, saving them millions of dollars. Also, from shipping expenses to raw materials, low fuel prices will help business owners manage and reduce expense lines. Additionally, more consumers have a lot more disposable income which is allowing them to spend more money to keep small businesses afloat. This includes the negative and positive impacts that the drop in oil prices are causing in the economy today. Now I'm going to turn it over to Gina, and she's going to tell us what oil companies are doing to survive. So what are the oil companies doing to survive? Most oil companies were in denial and were not prepared for a prolonged period of low pricing. So basically, it's coming down to survival of the fittest. Here are a few strategies they're using to offset the lower prices. One is corporate restructuring. Two is cutting operating budgets, which is including layoffs, as Lance mentioned earlier. And a third way is there are mergers and acquisitions. The first one is corporate restructuring. By corporate restructuring, they are decreasing their capital investments. Capital investments in the industry energy industry has decreased by 23% this year. They are increasing their cash flow by selling off marginal assets such as unproductive oil field acreage. Many are delaying new projects and they are going through their asset portfolio literally well by well and deciding which ones are profitable, which ones are not, which ones they should shut down, which ones they can let sit idle, and which ones they can sell off. In addition, oil producers are renegotiating their expensive oil service contracts, and the oil service companies are renegotiating their contracts with the oil producers. A second way is cutting their operating budgets. As Lance mentioned earlier, number one way is through layoffs. Many companies have had substantial layoffs this year. But in addition, the U.S. shell produ producers are expected to cut their budgets by 50% this year. Stone Energy has slashed its budget almost in half, PetroQuest has cut its budget in half, and U.S. exploration projects have declined 27% this year. 
which is actually a smaller decline than, when it, than was originally projected. There's also mergers and acquisitions. The smaller companies are being bought by mid-sized companies, and some mid-sized companies are being bought by the larger oil companies. Here are a couple examples of some mergers that are going on. Schlumberger and Cameron are merger that should be complete in the first quarter of 2016. Shell and BG Group are going through a merger that should also be complete in the first quarter of 2016. In addition, WPX Energy has sold assets worth $185 million to try to free a cash flow. So what does the future hold? I'm going to turn it over to William, and he's going to talk about what the future holds for oil companies. Here's a few different ways to look at the future of the oil and gas industry. Number one would be what is the future demand for oil and gas? When will the prices bounce back? And what is the future hold for oil and gas companies? For both um, oil and gas demand um, globally, it's set to increase in the near future. Global demand for oil will be over 110 million barrels per day by as soon as 2025. As developing countries continue to improve economically, their demand for oil will only increase as well. The U.S. oil industry is already one of the world's leading producers of oil. When will the prices bounce back? There are several reasons that could lead to a uh, price bounce back for the oil industry. One would be higher demand. Uh, others would be lower production, potential wars, and natural disasters. According to this Barclay research here, they're forecasting oil to be around $85 a barrel by 2020. And even in the lower case scenario, it would be $75 by 2020. What is the future hold for U.S. oil and gas companies? Experts say that there, will no, there won't be a better source of energy than oil and gas for the next 100 years. With that said, North America oil reserve is one of the highest in the world, when including unconventional reserves. As we can see here, it's roughly 397 million barrels of reserve that we have. New discoveries and drilling techniques can increase production and reserves even higher in the future. With so much oil to match the future demand uh, of oil globally, U.S. oil companies have a bright future ahead. This concludes our presentation. Thank you, everyone.